Hello and welcome to The Downsize. This is our weekly weigh-in where Christopher and I talk about our journey on our GLP-1 medication, Manjaro, and compounded trivepatide. So, so who exactly are you? Give me your whole name. I am Lorraine Durham. And who am I? I am married to Christopher Durham. <laughs> So, let's talk about this week. What was the progress, the standard weigh-in? Yeah, uh, I mean, I had an okay week. My very starting weight was 193. My current, well, not this week. You didn't... My starting weight means when you started your journey. Everybody knows that in the weight loss lingo world. Anyway, starting weight, starting weight on 929.23 was 193 pounds. Current weight as of this morning is 151.4. So my goal weight somewhere around 145. It's really between probably 150 and 145. So I'm almost there. I can see it. I'm down 41.6 total since 929, September 29th. And that's when we started our trizepatide on 929. My current dosage, I'm currently on a 12.5 milligram dose. And it's my third week of this dose. And honestly, today's shot day. So I was feeling a little snacky yesterday. And that happens towards the end of the week for me. I don't know if I'll move up to 15 in a couple weeks. 15 milligrams is the top dose. That's the max. Once you get there, there's nowhere else to go. So I don't know if I'll go there, stay on 12.5. I'll give it another week and, and see how I feel. How'd you do this week, Christopher? It was an average week. Nothing to write home about, but a little bit of loss here and there, so that's a good thing. My starting weight was 285.4 pounds, and I started at the same time as Lorraine at 929 of uh, 2023, so this past year. My current weight is 223.8. My goal weight is 190, 200-ish, so I'd like to be under under 200 pounds. My total loss is 61.6 pounds as of right now. That's a lot. Yeah, not too bad. It's like 1.6 pounds this week. Mm -hmm. Had a little, you know, a little more food, a little more carbs here or there. It goes up or down. Mm -hmm. My current dosage is today. I'll take the third dosage of the 10 milligram zip bound and probably stay on that for at least the, the rest of this month because I've got a fourth dosage and I, I'm thinking I'll stay on 10 milligrams for oh, another. Oh, you think so? I think so. You don't want to move up? I, no, I've only been on 10 for a month. I think to, I think yeah, I'm doing some fine. Some people think you should move up monthly. Some people say that you should move up when your weight loss slows or stalls. So if you lost, what did you lose this week? 1.6? Yeah. That's average. You want to be between one to, two, one to two pounds a week. So still doing pretty good. So... Yeah, you could stay on 10 or you can move up. Oh. How much more do you have to lose, though? Let's consult the, here's the magic app. You probably can't see that because it's green. To, oh, you want to get to, no, I want to, get to 190, 190 so that's another 30. Yeah, I'm not in a rush. It's not. Yeah. It, it still feels well, like it's working to me. The thing so. is, if you get to 15, there's nowhere, to there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. So you're on 10, so you may not want to go up to 12 just yet. That's what I said. Or you might want to see if you can speed things up. I don't know. That's the My head is I'll do 10 for another month, which hopefully mm -hmm. I can take off 5 or 10 pounds a month, which is what I've been averaging. You've been, been averaging 10 a month. I've been averaging 10. I'll do 12.5 for two months, and then I'll do 15. For two months. For however long. And then I'm probably. done, basically. And then it's maintenance, so we'll figure out what maintenance is with, with our doctor. That's crazy. It should be fine. Now, I think it might slow down. I don't know that you continue to lose 10 pounds a month when you approach your goal weight. Probably not. But as always, we like to talk about what was going on this week. You had some cool stuff going on. What were you doing? <laughs> yeah, I was an extra for a new TV series that's going to premiere on a movie channel, I think, next fall. This is something I've done a few times. It's a lot of standing around, but it's also fun because you might be in the movie and you get to see the stars and you, you know, get to see the inner workings of how these shows get made and produced. This past week, this uh, new TV show that I was uh, involved with, it was in a uh, country bar. So I'm a patron in this country bar, and there's 300 extras 
in this one particular scene. I got there at 11 o'clock and I went through the whole wardrobe and hair and makeup and then we went out into the bar and just sat in the bar as they kind of filmed things around us for the whole afternoon. So they would have some people move and sit, sit at the bar. They'd have some people be on the dance floor. They, But we were always moving around so I didn't really get to drink water <laughs> really from 11 to six and so by the time we broke for dinner I'm dying of thirst because I love my big cups and I had taken one of my big cups but I couldn't bring it onto the set because you don't want the Starbucks <laughs> cup on the on the, <laughs> on the Game of Thrones this, set. <laughs> this couldn't yeah. right exact, exactly we didn't want the we wanted to keep the continuity of the scene. Anyway, so, so to wrap it back into what we do here, wrap it back in, they, they serve this dinner journey. because they don't want 300 people to break for dinner and then some of them may not come back. So they served us dinner. And I guess the dinner had been waiting for us maybe a little bit too long. And I know it's hard to feed 300 people. I wasn't really looking for any gourmet meal. But this it was some chicken and vegetables and things that had just really been sitting in trays warming for too long and they were dried out and just not really edible but there was a very nice looking piece of cake at the end of the <laughs> there's always a nice looking piece of, cake. of the table so i said i haven't really eaten anything today and i did work out the morning before i went so anyway i got a piece of cake and also when you're in these in these TV and movie productions, they have a table called the craft services table, which is where the crew and the people in the movie can go by and pick up something to eat as they can. Because snacky kind snacky of things. salty sweets. Yeah. They didn't let the 300 extras get into the snacks for the crew. They had a separate craft services table for the extras, which I didn't even see until about 7 o'clock at night. After I'd eaten my dinner of a piece of cake and some mushy vegetables, I finally found the craft services table for the extras. And usually there's a lot of junk food on these tables, and I love junk food. Anyway, I grabbed a little two-pack of Oreos and thought, I'm doing good, staying strong, Got filled up my water, was feeling a little bit better. And then the night wore on, about 10 o'clock, I was done, and I wanted to leave, and I, but then I was like, no. Anyway, I was there t probably till about 12.30, and by midnight, I was just falling asleep, because I go to bed at 10 o'clock. I, I like my sleep. I get my eight hours of sleep. There you go. As you tell me that, what do you always tell me? You're wasting your life. I'm wasting my life, sleeping my life away. Anyway, we got to leave probably about 12.30 that night. And uh, I think I made $172 for my day. It means we lost $1,000. <laughs> my day of being an extra. <laughs> so, so that was yours. So anyway, that's, that was what I did on Tuesday. So earlier this past week, we also took a pickleball lesson and did a whole video on it. If you Don't haven't watch watched the video. the video, I'll put a link in, in the description. Hey, and please like and subscribe while you're... Yeah, please a absolutely do. Please and subscribe. It'll make sure that you're notified every time we do something new. And we're trying to publish honestly three four times a week right now so mm -hmm. you're going to see this coming out this is actually our fourth weekly episode like this if you have feedback we're always happy to do that so we did pickleball how was pickleball for you it was a lot of fun it, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of running around and chasing the ball because sometimes i would miss it a lot of times i would miss it but we learned a lot about the rules and stance and how to hold the paddle and stuff like that i was just thinking we should take a Take another lesson. I was looking Absolutely. at our calendar to see when Absolutely. we could do and, that. And, you know, people talk about what's going to happen when I go off the medication. Can we sustain it? And we talk about it as a journey, and you watch a lot of channels. They talk about it as a journey as well. What we know is if you just go off the medicine and don't do anything differently, you are not going to sustain it. If I go buy my ice cream yeah, and eat my Cheetos so. and, you know, all of that. I get snacky toward the end of the week, and I've been doing this. We've been doing for, this for 26 weeks. So I imagine if I went off of it, I would really have to watch everything that I ate. Right now, I feel like I don't really have to yeah. track well, every single thing like they tell you to do in Weight Watchers, and that's been very freeing. But I feel like it if and when I start spreading my doses out, I'm going to have to. Well, and exercise is part of that. And, the and exercise is, it's, I love exercise. I love exercise. You said that, else. didn't Can you? Can I just say that? I think I've been brainwashed into saying that. Oh. I've always 
exercised my whole life. Not yeah. that it made me skinny, but... I thought pickleball was fun. So. It was fun. <laughs> you know, it, it's a good thing. We jump over to current news because we like to keep you guys informed on what's going on in the world around GLP-1s, Manjaro, Ozempic, Wagovi, Zetbound, and whatever else is coming in the future. Mm -hmm. What's um, that new one called that they're try that's in testing right now? Uh, Retreditide? I can never say those words. Yeah, but there's a like new that. one testing that's supposed to be better than... Manjaro, so that that'll be interesting to see. Yep. So story number one, Reuters reported this past week a major shakeup in the GLP markets, and the numbers are huge. Eli Lilly's that bound soared in sales to new heights. Pretty cool. So seventy seven thousand five hundred and ninety new prescriptions in the US. Wow. Seventy seven thousand people that you don't know are on it that are taking That's it. That's right. <laughs> if you think nobody's on it, <laughs> think again. <laughs> Which puts it ahead of Novo Nordisk's Wagovi. So they're out selling Wagovi now. So the Ozempic mm -hmm. Wagovi that had been so strong mm -hmm. Zepbound Manjaro is outperforming mm -hmm. not only in weight loss but in sales. Even though Wagovi has six thousand fewer prescriptions filled that week, Novo still maintains its lead in total prescriptions over Zepbound by twenty five thousand three hundred and seven. Mm -hmm. So they had a good lead. Mm -hmm. We'll see what it we'll keep track of this. I mean Zepbound just goes. came out in November, so So they're growing fast. <laughs> yeah, look out. So Lily launched Zepbound in the US just this past December, as you said, while Wagovi got the green light more than two years ago. So that's a long head yeah. start. According to data analytics firm Global Data, GLP-1 drugs like Zepbound and Wagovi are on track to surpass even widely used cancer immunotherapies as the best-selling medicines in the country. Well, so there's more fat people than there are people. With there's cancer. a lot of heavy people out I mean, there. I shouldn't say fat people. Obese. Obesity is a disease. I should. And you know what? I shouldn't even say fat people because that's not. I think I'm fat. Okay. Just call me the fat guy. I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't like that. I shouldn't have said that. We'll um, that. To note, and we've talked about it over the last few weeks, despite the rosy projections, there's a harsh reality check. There's officially shortages. Yeah, there's all those prescriptions. So, Where are they getting filled? <laughs> so there's absolutely no way they're going to continue that kind of growth if they do not have product to sell. As they say, if you can't sell it if you don't have it. Can't it's sell just, it from the stock room. So, mm -hmm. Lorraine, what was your uh, story this week? It's tax time. Have you filed your income taxes yet? I just filed our extension. We have a little bit more time, but I was thinking about everything we spent in 2023 when we started on Manjaro, on the compounded trisepatide, on doctor's visits. And so I was wondering if these were tax deductible. So I did a little research and I was wondering what tax deductions are related to weight loss. Caveat. Not an accountant. Not an accountant. <laughs> not check, a doctor, not an accountant. Yeah, check with your accountant or your tax preparation person. But there is a medical expenses deduction. So if you itemize your deduction on your tax return, rather than taking the standard deduction, you may be able to deduct medical expenses that exceed a certain percentage of your adjusted gross income. That's AGI. Weight loss programs and treatments may be deductible if they're prescribed by a doctor to treat specific medical conditions such as obesity or hypertension. So that's really interesting. And prescription medications also may be deductible. So if you're prescribed medications, which we are, specifically for the treatment of obesity or related conditions, the cost of these medications may be deductible as a medical expense, again, if you itemize your deductions. It has to be a big enough percentage of your income. Depends on how much you make. If you have a health savings account, which is an HSA, or a flexible spending account, which is an FSA, you can use funds from those accounts to pay for eligible medical expenses related to weight loss, such as doctor visits, prescription medications, and certain weight loss programs. So these are programs that you get through your employer. So I used to have a flexible spending account at some different companies I'd worked for. So you contribute to those plans pre-tax and then Which you... Which is like a bonus, basically. Yeah, if you're in a 20, 30% tax bracket, you're, that's your saving. You know, now we're self-employed and we don't have these things, but you might work for a big company and you might have those. So it's good to think about that. And it's important to note tax laws and regulations can change. It's a good idea to consult with a tax professional or accountant for personalized advice regarding tax deductions related to weight loss in your specific situation. Additionally, keeping detailed records and documentation of your medical expenses is crucial for claiming any deductions accurately. And one thing I do, we 
put all our prescriptions at CVS. I'm a big CVS couponer and fan. I love the extra care bucks. But you can go into your extra care account online and you can pull up a report of all the prescriptions you have filled for that year for your family. So that's a quick and easy way just to total that up right there. How that's about a, you, Christopher? That's a great tool to have. So What's your news? news? Story number three, <laughs> Eli Lilly announced another big plant. This time they'll be in Germany, specifically in the town of Alze, and they're investing 2.3 billion euros, which will be about 2.5 billion U.S. Mm. Oh, so if you're watching in the U.S., why do you care? That means the Germans and the Europeans are getting their own set of it, and they're not uh, pulling, they're not so pulling out not, of our supply that's chain. That's not going to come our way. No, but have no fear, because remember, what did they announce two years ago here? Uh, they're building a Eli Lilly plant near us. That is right. So this move, which was disclosed by the pharmaceutical giant on Friday, responds to the escalating need, obviously, for diabetes and obesity treatments. They know there's a problem. They're trying to build factories as quickly as possible. Believe me, they, they don't want to be out of stock. They have no desire to do that. They aim to ramp up production of Zepbaum, Manjaro, and Trulicity, along with the necessary injection pins. So those pins nice. that are Shows slowing them down a little bit. Here, please, release the valve. The big plastic pins. The big plastic pins. Easy to use. The move comes after the manufacturer began construction of a new plant that would include 600 jobs here near us in Concord, North Carolina. So it's actually probably 10 miles from our home, maybe. It's not very far. Yeah, we're going to drive out there. and You uh, might see a video. Maybe we'll go do some <laughs> snooping and do a, do a lowdown on it. <laughs> and tell them work faster. faster. <laughs> from what I understand, because we get reports from our local news on the plant, too, they're Instead of waiting for the entire factory to be completed, they're actually building it in sections and turning lines on as they get completed. Oh, so right. it's an interesting way to do it. Is it like one person makes the – do they make the pens in that factory too? Or do I think so. So they make the pens and they are putting the medicine in the pens. I think it's a big automated assembly line. Yeah. I don't I, think there's one. It's not a Model T. Here's well, no, I've, only, I've only been through <laughs> clothing factories where one guy's uh, sewing the shoulder and the next guy's sewing the seam and the next guy, you know. I suspect if you walked into this factory, you can probably find videos on it. It's all automated, all closed off because it's got to be hermetically sealed, for lack of rights. You don't want hair oh, yeah. and, and other things. Yeah, uh, so much goes it's into all got to be very, very uh, clean rooms and such. Don't go into stuff. clothing manufacturing. In my video that came out earlier this week, I reviewed basically the comparison between Zepbound and the compounding and also plugged Dave Knapp's on the pen uh, social media campaign. Or hashtag release, release the vial. The we'll do it again, Dave. Great job. He's really trying to push... These manufacturers to do something more than this to give us options to where we could use a vial and a syringe. Excellent. We would certainly Which is be what I do for the compounded version. Yeah, we'd certainly be happy to do that. So hashtag release the file. I'll tag you, Dave, as well. Moving on, the $1.7 billion facility in Concord will utilize the latest technology to manufacture perinatal injectable products and devices and increase the company's manufacturing capacity. Oh, so they so, are doing the pens there. Yeah, they're, they're doing everything there. That's the news for this week. What else is going on? Are we are we looking at anything exciting coming up? I know you've got your, what's your next story coming up? Your next video? Talking about compounded medications and compounding pharmacies and what they are, how they work, why you probably shouldn't be afraid of ones that are state regulated. So that's exciting. We'll both have a couple of stories coming up this week, a new interview that Lorraine did with another user of the GLP-1s. If you'd like to be a part of the interview series, both Lorraine and I are going to be doing them. I'm taking a slightly different slant, looking for the dad perspective on mm -hmm. it. If you'd like to be a part of that, reach out, message us, leave a comment. If there's anything you'd like us to do stories on, you'd like us to comment on, see if we can answer questions for, again, please leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. Yeah, we try to answer all our comments. I'm usually answering them unless um, Christopher... I Johnson. usually say it's Christopher. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, please leave us a comment. And uh, if you'd like me to interview you, comment that and I'll give you my email address where you can absolutely you can contact us. We'd love to do an interview every week with people and see how they're doing. Yeah. So that's been our show for the week. Thanks for joining us on The Downsize. My name is Christopher Durham. This is my lovely <laughs> wife. Lorraine Durham. <laughs> Please take one moment, subscribe, hit the bell. It'll notify you every time we publish. 
and our numbers are looking good. We're almost at 600 subscribers right now. Yeah, uh, thank really you. Really 100 this week. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye.